We have uh, Ira Whiney and John Fleck, uh, both coming up to talk about uh, scalable name and address resolution infrastructure. My name's Ira Whiney. Um, I work at Intel now. Um, I think a lot of you already know me. Um, um, so this kind of continues on what both Hal and Todd have been talking about and some of the work that we've been focusing on um, really in the last couple months. And uh, we'll just kind of dive right into it. Okay, same slide, same problem. LibIBU Matt has quirkiness, that's how I'll call it. Um, we have all the issues that we've been working around for years to address the question of is this a new problem. Part of the, part of the thing is that a lot of our customers work at Lawrence Livermore Lab or LANL or Sandia, and these are very bright researchers. And when they run up against a problem like this, they say, aha, my cluster is homogeneous. It has the same MTU, the same rate. I run one service level. I know what my QoS is. I'll just code that in my MPI app. And they happily run along for the next couple of years on that cluster. And then we come in with a new cluster, and their app doesn't run. So they've, you know, we work with customers who are really bright and they've worked around these problems and we've tried to work with them, but we're getting to a point where it has to be dynamic and it has to be configurable and manageable and centralized manageable because some of the system ends, as I'm sure Susan can attest to, have been frustrated with this because it, it, it changes how you configure the cluster and how you manage the cluster. Um, you know, for those of you who know me, I used to work at Lawrence Livermore Lab, and I worked with the system ins. I'm very familiar with all those problems. Um, so you'll, again, nodes access the same SA services from um, IBACM, the kernel, UMAD. Um, this, this is a problem, as Todd already alluded to. Um, currently, IBACM, sorry, I was just reading the note here relies on IP over IB, DNS, ARP. Um, names currently mapped to a GID and PKEY endpoint. So this is kind of some of the problems with IBACM because some people may have said, you know, last year Sean in his presentation said, why are we doing SSA? Doesn't IBACM problem solve this problem? Um, not exactly. There's a lot of assumptions that IBACM made. Um, again, because we're kind of working around some of the fundamental problems with the management infrastructure. Um, and, and so um, when Hal saw this presentation, he said, what do you mean by cross partition names? And what I meant is, if I want to query a node, um, if I'm node A and I want to query node B, and node A and node B are in partition one, but they're also in partition two and partition three, the SA knows that they're in partition one and it should give the right uh, path record for us to talk in partition one, okay? But IBACM, you kind of have to know that you're both in partition one before you actually resolve the name so that you know which partition to talk over. So in some cases, you do get cross, quote, quote unquote, cross partition um, resolutions that you want to do. In other cases, you can't. Um, so it really depends on how your partitions or how, how your cluster is configured. It gets back to the centralized management um, problem. Um, so. Uh, as far as GID to, to PKEY and endpoint resolution, you know, Hal um, submitted some things that are in IBACM and, and they help to map names to GIDs, which is great. Um, uh, so, you know, we want to start to build on this. Um, so, IBACM provides a great starting point, as we all recognized last year, and SSA is starting to build into that. So, I'm kind of presenting. S, you know, IBACM as what I'm calling or terming loosely as an SA proxy, um, for, for better or worse. So provide controlled and consistent access to user space name, path record resolution services. Um, so SA access control, accuracy, easy use, portability, um, and, and enable all consumers. You know, Todd kind of talked about this already. Um, and then, of course, caching and the scalability problems that we've discussed in the last couple of presentations. Um, so we are proposing everything is done through IBACM um, with, with some additional name services beyond what it currently can do. Um, it can, again, control access to the SA. If it needs to use UMAD, 
because like with SSA, we're using our sockets. We're kind of bypassing UMAD. Um, to some extent, we still use UMAD for connection and you know other stuff. But but basically, we could bypass UMAD altogether. Um, and we're proposing that it's backed by quote providers. Libfabric use that term. I'll use that term for whatever. Um, SSA is kind of one of the providers. And what we'd like to do is kind of keep the default functionality that's there and move it into its own provider. And then for name services and other things, you know, I, I just brainstormed at this conference that, that maybe that might be other providers. Maybe those are separate in functionality somehow. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to Hal. I haven't talked to Hal about this yet. So I'm just kind of brainstorming up here right now. Um, so uh, you, you mentioned, you know, how have other network topologies, how other other the network technologies solve this problem? So we, we have looked at DNS quite a bit. And, you know, because it solves a lot of the name resolution problems. Um, what we really want is a name to path record. Um, most MPI jobs are specified with, uh, you know, MP, MPI run, you say I want node A, you know, node one through 300, run my job. So node one to 300 has to resolve. And what we really want is a path record so we can start talking from node one to node two. Um, barring that, there are some other mechanisms and translations we may want to do. Name to GID, name to GID in path record, name to IP, name to IP in path record. It kind of depends on how much data the node knows and how much information, or I shouldn't say the node, how much data the application knows, what it feeds into us, and then how we kind of go about the resolve down to the path record. Um, furthermore, we're looking at um, you know, enhancing IBACM to talk through Netlink such that the kernel also gets all of this. Because one of the, one of the big problems I see is not just with um, MPI jobs, um, but lots of people, they see IP over IB, it's running, they say, hey, you know, I can just write a quick little script or an app or some socket program or I can use Python to do sockets and they want to talk across nodes. And suddenly, you know, you've solved all these problems for MPI and then somebody goes and writes sockets and is running over IP over IB and you get ARP storms and the cluster falls apart. So we need to support all of this stuff in the kernel as well. Um, so this is an eye chart with the overall architecture. Um, you know, I've thrown a lot of details in there, some of which off to the left has been talked about. Um, but, but this is really what I'm talking about here is our DMACM is kind of our front end interface. IBACM we're proposing to re-architect such that it has a, a core. And for packaging and ease of use, ease of install, some of these providers are included. SSA would be included in the tree. The default provider is included in the tree. And then we could all have external providers. Todd alluded to people who are experimenting, whatever. Again, our users are very smart. They're bright. Maybe they want to write their own provider and they want to do some path record you know, resolutions in some different way. Um, they could write a provider, lo you know, load it, deal open, boom, and they're off and running and experimenting with type this type of stuff. Um, you know, uh, we, we hope that as people, if, if people come up with a good idea for a provider or whatever, that they would include it, it would become an included provider, and, you know, that would kind of go, I mean, it kind of similar to the kernel model where some drivers are external, they get bit external like Lester, and then eventually they kind of move into the kernel and, you know, they're supported, and if we change any of these interfaces, yay, they get that support. And the most important part is down in the kernel level, the little box down below. Um, right now, we're proposing that IBSA, it kind of funnels all path record queries in the kernel get funneled through IBSA. So it seemed like a good point to query up into user space to get this cache data um, and other services. So we're exploring using Netlink. So when kernel uh, users make these requests, it calls up, does, does an up call. That's a different terminology, but you know, basically calls in the user face, gets all the data, blah, blah, blah. Um, so kind of our plans are, and, and we're working through some of this, we, we were trying to see if we could get some stuff to post to the list, but um, we're not quite there yet. Um, so basically we wanna separate IBACM into a core and a default provider to begin with. Um, 
And then we need to sort of define what the core handles, um, obviously provider loading, assignment to ports, endpoints, um, steering client requests to the correct provider, port device events, so ports going up and down, IP address changes, you know, some people may have seen some patches I did do in this area already, um, Netlink requests and events, and then administration, config file parsing, logging, all that, you know, all that great stuff we, we hate to do and love to do and whatever. Um, and then the default provider would handle the same functionality as IBACM currently resolves, maybe with some enhancements um, that, that make it a little bit more correct or as we find bugs, you know, we're already finding a, a few of the bugs and we've submitted some to, to Sean already. Basic flow data, this is not at all official or set in stone because part of what we need to do is we're just starting to look into how these interfaces would be and the first implementation that, that we plan to do is separate into that core and, and the default provider and kind of define what the default provider needs but we know that SSA is going to have different needs and, and maybe we come up with other ideas as we go so the API between the providers down below here is going to be different right now. How do I use this thing? There we go. Okay, so up here in the consumer app, you know, we already have this socket connection with a request, uh, different types of requests. It gets a response of a path record back. Down here right now, we're sort of like just passing it through to the core, the default provider um, in, in our prototype code. Again, we don't have anything really official, but we kind of threw it together and it works, so yay. Um, so we're, we're working on it. We want to collaborate with the working group, RDMACM maintainer, Sean, and anybody else on the list who's interested. Um, we are looking to submit to the list imminently. Um, there is a provider branch. I, th I think that's an open fabrics Git tree already. So there's a little bit of like preliminary work that's already on that branch in the upstream tree um, on a branch. Um, the API is going to evolve, like I said, we need to really make sure that all the things that SSA needs are provided for, and then, you know, that might even feed into requirements that we see for other providers that may come down the pipe. Um, so the main API calls are obviously path record resolution, name to GID, mapping helper, you know, ARP things, I, I don't know. Um, so... So along the lines of DNS and stuff, I, we've, we've kind of looked at RDMACM currently and, and we start to look at name resolution. Um, name resolution right now totally relies on DNS. And uh, so that forces you to go through a name to an IP and then ARPing. So we've started to look at resolving name um, and having the name resolution look at IBACM first and then fall back to DNS. And, uh, you know, so looking at how to enhance this. There's some enhancements that need to go into RDMACM as well as IBACM. Um, right now in the prototype, only a single local endpoint can be supported. Um, obviously, we need to, to figure that, those solutions out. And part of that is the, uh, the P key stuff I was talking about before, where you had to kind of know your P key beforehand. Um, so, uh, I'm going to let John talk more to the kernel stuff. He's worked on that. Right. So I've been focusing on some of the kernel changes. Uh, we identified three, uh, modules, which query path records through the IBSA. They are SRP, IP over IB and RDMA CM. And we thought it would be a great way to extend the path record queries to go up to the IBACM layer rather than having it go out to the SA. So we decided to use Netlink messages to communicate with the kernel level to the user space level. And we've used the existing RDMA Netlink interface rather than creating something brand new. So, and, and to go further than that, we, we use the existing ACM messaging interface uh, however, there have been some suggestions possibly using uh, MAD messages and using that data path. So we've, we've taken a step back to investigate that a little further before we submit anything to, this, to the uh, mailing list. So here's a top-level diagram of what's going on. You can see the 
kernel messages, um, the kernel modules. How do you do this? Red button. Okay. Kernel modules send their path record queries into the IBSA. That in turn sends a Netlink message up to IBACM, and there's a receive function which, if it's successful, it calls the callback associated with that path record query, or it'll in turn send out a regular path record query to the SA. So we're not really changing the uh, uh, performance per se. And this is a little more detail about what we have going on. Uh, in the ACM layer, we created basically two new message, uh, two new functions, one to handle receiving the uh, Netlink messages and one to handle the response of if the path record's found or not. And they really plug into the existing ACM architecture, so not a lot of changes there. At the kernel level, level uh, we had to pass a context list uh, from the call, the upstream calling path and have it ready for the downstream calling path. Uh, and it's quite simple, just a list of all the parameters which are used for the callback or if we have to, in fact, go and query the SA um, via the normal path. So this is just a diagram of how we layered the messages, the ACM, existing ACM messages onto the Netlink header. Uh, which gets passed up ahead. And again, this is already defined in the IBACM, so it's reusing what's already there. Uh, the final slide is really just talking about if the IBACM is not running on the system, we check if there's a listener available in the IBACM on that node. If it's not present, we don't even bother sending out the Netlink messages. We'll just go right out to the SA. So I think that gives us some... Uh, backwards compatibility. Um, you want to do the final slide? Uh, sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so lots of things that we brainstormed about, looked at, researched, hacked on, um, notice registration. Uh, you know, I go back and forth. Do we need this? Don't we need this? I've talked to Hal a little bit about it. Um, you know, uh, Bob brings up some good points. You know, what are users registering for? Um, multicast support, um, IP to GID mapping. Um, you know, could IP over IB use Netlink to IBACM? That was what I was thinking. And then, you know, Jason at the conference this week said, you know, well, you know, there's a user space ARP daemon and blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, I don't know. We need to research that and figure out what the plan is and get input. So we are definitely welcome to any input, suggestions, requirements, et cetera. Um, a quick shout out to uh, Hal Rosenstock, who's been helping a lot, Kaiki Wan, who's been doing a lot of our coding for us, and, and Sean Hefty. Um, you know, you guys help us out a lot and with figuring out what the right thing to do is. Um, anyway, so thank you. Questions? Go ahead. So Hal mentioned that, that Taurus support is not included immediately in, in SSA. And I'm curious as if, if that is an example of a provider um, in this proposed architecture, or does that have to be part of the core um, and then option at QoS? Um, that would be provided by the provider. Um, SSA, if you're using SSA configured on that fabric, you would need SSA to be supporting the QoS because those QoS parameters, the SLs, et cetera, need to come from the SA. Um, so, you know, one option could be to write your own provider or, you know, do something. And, th and that's part of the reason we're sort of, you know, suggesting this kind of architecture is there may be things that we just don't think of and people want to work on. Um, we would like to see SSA do QoS, and we're, you know, we'll see what we can do to help with that. So, any others? Okay, thank you. Thanks.